This side of the pleasure principle. The repressive traits in Freud have nothing to do with the want of human warmth that business-like revisionists point to in the strict theory of sexuality. Professional warmth for the sake of profit fabricates closeness and immediacy, where people are worlds apart. It deceives its victims by affirming in his weakness the way of the world which made him so, and it wrongs him in the degree that it deviates from truth. If Freud was deficient in such human sympathy, he would in this at least be in the company of the critics of political economy, which is better than that of Tagore or Werfel. The fatality was rather that in the teeth of bourgeois ideology, he tracked down conscious actions materialistically to their unconscious instinctual basis, but at the same time concurred with the bourgeois con contempt of instinct, which is itself a product of precisely the rationalizations that he dismantled. He explicitly aligns himself, in the words of the introductory lectures, with the general evaluation, which places social goals higher than the fundamentally selfish sexual ones. As a specialist in psychology, he takes over the antithesis of social and egoistic statically without testing it. He no more discerns in it the work of repressive society than the trace of the disastrous mechanisms that he has himself described. Or rather, he vacillates, devoid of theory and swaying with prejudice, between negating the, re the renunciation of instinct as repression contrary to reality and applauding it as sublimation beneficial to culture. In this contradiction, something of the Janus character of culture exists objectively, and no amount of praise for healthy sensuality can wish it away. In Freud, however, it leads to a devaluation of the critical standard that decides the goal of analysis. Freud's unenlightened enlightenment plays into the hands of bourgeois delusion. As a late opponent of hypocrisy, he stands ambivalently between desire for the open emancipation of the oppressed and apology for open oppression. Reason is for him a mere superstructure, not as official philosophy maintains on account of his psychologism, which has penetrated deeply enough into the historical moment of truth, but rather because he rejects the end, remote to meaning, impervious to reason, which alone could prove the means, reason, to be reasonable, pleasure. Once this has been disparagingly consigned to the repertoire of tricks for preserving the species, and so itself exposed as a cunning form of reason, without consideration of that moment and pleasure which transcends sub subversient, sub subservience to nature, ratio is degraded to rationalization. Truth is abandoned to relativity and people to power. He alone who could situate utopia in blind somatic pleasure, which satisfying the ultimate intention is intentionless, has a stable and valid idea of truth. In Freud's work, however, the dual hostility towards mind and pleasure, whose common root psychoanalysis has given us the means for discovering, is unintentionally reproduced. The place in the future of an illusion where, with the worthless wisdom of a hard-boiled old gentleman, he quotes the commercial traveler's dictum about leaving heaven to the angels and the sparrows, should be set beside the passage in the lectures where he damns in pious horror the perverse practices of pleasure-loving society. Those who feel equal revulsion for pleasure and paradise are indeed best suited to serve as objects. The empty, mechanized quality observable in so many who have undergone successful analysis is to be entered to the account not only of their illness, but also of their cure, which dislocates what it liberates. The therapeutically much lauded transference, the breaking of which is not for nothing, the crux of analytic treatment, the artificially contrived situation where the subject performs voluntarily and calamitously, the annulment of the self, which was once brought about involuntarily and, benefic and beneficially, beneficially by erotic self-abandonment, is already the pattern of the reflex-dominated follow-my-leader behavior, which liquidates, together with all intellect, the, the analyst, the analysts who have betrayed it.